Hello and welcome to episode 6 on the history of British aircraft companies. This episode will look at the Avro Aircraft Company, possibly the most famous of all British aircraft manufacturers. It was started by brothers Humphrey and Edwin Elliott Vernon Rowe, or AV, Humphrey being more of a silent partner. Elliott Vernon Rowe experimented at Brooklands and Lee Marshes, where he finally achieved his first controlled successful flight in July 1909. He established the A.V. Rowan Company in the basement of Everard's Elastic Webbing Company at Brownsville, Brownsfield Mill in Manchester on January the 1st, 1910. A shed was also rented at Brooklyn's Flying Grounds to house the flyable machines that he offered to sell at £450. Today, that is the equivalent of £50,000. Avro's headquarters were up in Manchester with their design and development department and by 1913 it became a fully limited company. The first real Avro type to be built was the Avro 500, or Avro E. 18 examples were manufactured and saw service in the fledgling Royal Flying Corps, with numbers 3, 4 and 5 squadrons. This later developed into the famous Avro 504 biplane, which was primarily used for tra as a training aircraft. So many orders were received that new premises had to be found, and these were found in Clifton Street, and then it was later moved to Newton Heath. Full development of this site on and adjacent land was not completed until 1919. In the meantime, the Avro 504 kept the company busy throughout the war and afterwards. As it was primarily a training aircraft with the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service, with over 9,000 aircraft being built, the Royal Naval Air Service used it in other roles, including a bombing raid on the Zeppelin works on the banks of Lake Constance. Owing to increased production and lack of the flying facilities near the Manchester factories, A.V. Rowe actually selected Hamble on the south coast near Southampton as a place for manufacture of aircraft and seaplanes. He even had the idea of building a garden city of 450 homes. However, due to wartime shortages, the development of the site was halted. In 1924, the operation moved to Newhall Farm, now Woodford Aerodrome in Cheshire. Production continued at Newton Heath, with final assembly being carried out at Woodford. During 1928, Elliot Verdon Rowe sold his stakeholding in the company, and with the proceeds, purchased the S.E. Sanders Company to create Sanders Rowe Limited, or SARO, as it became known, based on the handle. J.D. Sidley bought the shares in A.V. Rowe and, Company, Rowe and Company, and it became part of the Armstrong Sidley Development Company, sister company to Air Armstrong Whitworth Aircraft. Following AV's departure, Roy Chadwick, his personal assistant, became chief designer. In 1935, J.D. Sidley merged his interest with Hawker, so the Avro, ba Avro brand passed on again. But however, they did still trade under the Avro name. In 1938, a new factory was opened at Chadderton, near Manchester, where amongst other aircraft, over 3,000 Lancaster bombers were made and shipped by road to Woodford for final assembly. A year later, an experimental department was established at the newly opened RAF Ringway, now Manchester Airport, with the addition of yet another factory at Yeadon Aerodrome, now Leeds Bradford, for the production of over 5,500 aircraft, including the Avro Anson, Lancaster, York and Lincoln. As with a number of manufacturers during the war, Many aircraft were designed by one manufacturer, but licensed built by others. This improved numbers being constructed, but also acted as a form of security against bombing raids on factories, limiting, limiting the idea of production from being halted. Some aircraft even had parts such as wings built behind shops in workshops off a high street. Avro was no stranger to this. They even built the Bristol Blenheim under license. As, as with the First World War, Avro played a significant role, providing over 7,500 aircraft to the RAF and Bomber Command, and these included the short-lived Manchester, the famous Lancaster, the York, and the Lincoln. After the war, Roy Chadwick turned his attentions to civil aircraft and designed the Avro Tudor, which was to be Britain's first pressurised airliner. However, due to the development of the new jet airliners by de Havilland in the UK and Boeing in the USA, very, very few Tudors were ever built or sold. Avro, however, answered the Air Ministry's call for a peacetime maritime reconnaissance aircraft, and it produced the Avro Shackleton, 
which flew for the first time in 1949 and entered RAF service in 1951. The Shackleton was four-engine development of the Lincoln, but used technology from the Tudor. And the engines were Rolls-Royce Griffin with contra-rotating propellers, making it almost seem as though it had eight engines. It served the RAF for over 40 years before being retired as recently as 1991. Sadly, Roy Chadwick died in August 1947, ironically a victim of an accident involving the prototype of his own design, Avro Tudor II. However, he did oversee the design of possibly Avro's most famous aircraft, the Vulcan. The Vulcan was originally designed as a nuclear strike aircraft, but helped maintain the British nuclear deterrent throughout the early days of the Cold War. Some 136 aircraft were built, and a number reaching a not- notoriety during the Falklands crisis in 1982. This is on Operation Black Buck, the longest bombing raid in history, when bombers and tanker aircraft took off from RAF Bryce Norton and staged by the Ascension Islands in the Atlantic, down to bomb Port Stanley Airfield. This was some 26 years after the first flight. A much beloved, the last flying Vulcan, X-ray Hotel 558, carried out a fairway display tour of the UK in 2015, before a final show at its home base at Doncaster Robin Hood Airport, where it currently resides. When Avro became part of Hawker Siddeley Aviation Limited in July 1962, some thought the name had disappeared forever. However, it was to reappear some 30 years later when in 1994, British Aerospace rebranded its 146 regional jet design and adopted the name of Avro RJ for regional jet, known as the Whisper Jet. In Canada in 1945, Hawker Siddeley Group created Avro, Avro Canada Limited. At first it started off servicing aircraft such as the Hawker Sea Fury, Mitchell Bomber and Lancasters, but later went on to design its own aircraft, most famous of which is the Avro Arrow. In 1962, AV Row Canada was dissolved by the Hawker Siddeley Group, and the Avro name was no more. Next time I'll be looking at the Western Aircraft Company, fairly unique in the fact that it never, really mer- never merged to form British Aerospace. It made fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft, and today still makes helicopters. However, under the ownership of another company. If you have any queries or information, please email thehangerat at gmail.com. Thank you very much.